Hey everyone! In today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a slip knot and chains for beginner crocheters. These are two really important things that you're going to need to know in order to begin crocheting. And you can't really do anything else until you learn how to do these two things, so that's what I'm going to show you. So you might be asking yourself, what is a chain and why do I need to know how to make one? You know, this just looks like a string. How does this turn into something I can wear or give to a friend? And basically what a chain is, is it's the foundation that you're gonna build your project onto. So later down the line, when I teach you how to do some different stitches, you're gonna be building them on top of these chains that we're about to make. So if you wanna learn how to make a slip knot and chains, be sure to stick around and I'll show you how. For this project, I'm gonna be using a five millimeter crochet hook and a size four acrylic yarn. This is just some scrap yarn that I had laying around my house, so any size yarn and hook that you have lying around your house will work for this project as well. So to get started, we're going to start with the tail end of the yarn. That's the side of the yarn that's not connected to anything. The side that's still connected to the ball is called the working side. So to start, we're going to take the tail end of the yarn, we're going to take a couple inches, and then we're going to lay it over our two fingers like this. From there, you're going to securely place your thumb onto that string and make sure it's really secure and not going anywhere because you're going to be holding it for the entire process. So make sure it's nice and secure, it's not going anywhere. From there you're going to take the working side of the yarn and you're going to wrap it around your two fingers like this. And when you do this you want to make sure that there's no crossing of any kind. You don't want it to look like this, you don't want it to look like this. You're going to make sure it's nice and even across your two fingers and you're going to hold it securely with your ring finger. So you can see here that we have these two parallel lines. These are the two lines that we're going to be working with here. So to start, you're going to take the string that's on the right side and you're going to cross it over the string on the left side. See that you're going to cross it over. From there, you're going to pick up the string that you just crossed over, pick that one up, and then you're going to cross it over on top, bring it over to the left again. From there, you're going to pick up that string that you just crossed over, and your thumb should still be securely holding on to that tail end of the yarn. From there, we're going to take our middle finger and index finger out, and we're going to pull. And so this is what your slip knot should look like. If you mess up at all, you can always just pull on the two ends to release that knot, and I'll do it with you one more time. So let's take a couple inches of the tail end, point it down, lay it over your two fingers, hold it securely with your thumb, take the working end of the yarn and wrap it around your two fingers, making sure there's no crossing, and then hold it securely with your ring finger. From there, you're gonna take the string on the right side, cross it over the string on the left, Pick up that string that you just crossed over, pick it up, and cross it over, and then pick up that yarn that you just crossed over. Gently release your middle and index finger, and then pull. So that is a slip knot right there. Let's practice one more time. Your tail end of the yarn is pointing down. Lay it on top of your two fingers, hold it securely with your thumb. Wrap the working end of the yarn around, making sure there's no crossing. Hold it with your ring finger. You're going to take the string on the right side, cross it over the string on the left. Pick up that string that you just crossed over, pull it up and over. And then pick up that string that you just crossed over, hold it securely, release your index and middle, and pull. So go ahead and practice that a couple times until you feel really comfortable with it. And pretty soon you'll be able to do it really quick without even thinking about it. And once you're back at this spot, we're gonna meet me back here and we'll start learning how to do some chains. All right, so now that we have our slip knot, we are ready to start making some chains. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our crochet hook and we're gonna put it in that loop that we just made. So it's in that loop. 
We're going to grab the tail end of the yarn in the same hand that's holding the crochet hook, and we're going to pull on the working side of the yarn. So you can see now that the loop is securely onto your crochet hook. From there, we're going to grab the tail end of the yarn with our left hand in between your thumb and ring finger, and the working side of the yarn is going to be in between your index finger and your middle finger. So you're going to hold it like that. Make sure there's a decent amount of tension, like this. And from here, we're going to take our crochet hook, and we're going to bring it in front of that working yarn, and we're going to wrap it around like this. And then once it's wrapped around once, you're going to point your crochet hook down in order to make sure that the yarn catches, and we're going to pull it through just like that. So there we go, we have one chain. Let's go ahead and make another one. You're going to bring your crochet hook in front of that working yarn. We're going to cross it over in front, wrap it around, point your hook down to make sure it catches, and pull through. So now we have two chains. Let's go ahead and make one more. I'm going to take our crochet hook, Cross it over in front of the working yarn, wrap it back around, make sure it catches on that hook, and pull through. So some common issues that I see with beginners is that they haven't quite gotten the hang of getting their tension right. And so some examples of what I see pretty often is that people will have too loose of a tension. So when they're crocheting, their chains just look really big, a lot bigger than the other chains that they've been making. And sometimes you can tell if you're having trouble getting a good grip on that working yarn, that means your tension is probably too loose. So all you'll need to do is make sure you hold your working yarn a little bit tighter in between your index and your middle, and your chain, chains just start looking a little bit more even. And on the contrary, another issue I see is that people will hold their tension way too tight and so what will happen if you do that is that you'll do try to make a chain, but you'll have a hard time trying to get that hook to come through. So if your tension is way too tight, you'll have a hard time pulling your hook out in between that loop. So what you want to do for that is you'll just want to loosen up that tension in between your uh, index and your middle finger. And this just takes, takes a lot of practice. You just need to keep making some chains. Go ahead and keep practicing, and pretty soon you'll get to a point where your chains will look nice and even. Not too loose, not too tight. So if you get to a point where you have a bunch of chains, but looking back on it, you see a few that you're not quite happy with and you want to go back, all you need to do is take your crochet hook out off of the loop and pull on that working side of the yarn. So what that's going to do is it's going to release those chains and you can go back to the one that you want to redo. And from there you're going to see a small loop and you're just going to stick your crochet hook into that loop. And then you can redo from there. Another thing I quickly wanted to mention, you'll notice that when I first start making the first few chains, I'm holding the tail end pretty close to that original knot that we made, that slip knot. And I'll be crocheting, I'll be making some chains, and then eventually you're going to get to a point where you have so many chains that your hand isn't going to be able to hold all of them. So all you want to do when that happens is you'll just bring your thumb up from where the knot was originally, and you're just going to grab it up a little bit closer to where you're working. So that's just going to help you um, with the tension and keeping the chains nice and even. So every couple of stitches, I'll just move my grip up a little bit closer. Every couple of chains, and I'll move it up. And then you'll have a bunch of really nice chains. So almost all patterns are going to tell you exactly how many chains you need to get started. But if you're just trying to make a project and freehand crochet make something, um, what I usually like to do is just kind of eyeball it. So let's say I'm trying to make a coaster that's about the same size as this one. What I'll do is I will take the chains that I already have and kind of measure it up against the project size that I want to end up with. So 
I'll keep crocheting a couple more because it looks like it needs to be a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is you're going to take that first chain, line it up to the end of the project. This one's not quite long enough, so let me make a few more like that. And so this looks to be about the same length as the project I want to end up with. So what we're going to do, like I said, this is going to be the foundation. So you're going to start building your stitches on top of these chains. And eventually you're just going to keep building and building and building until you have something that's about this size. So go ahead and keep practicing until your chains look nice and even like this. Thank you so much for watching my video today, guys. I hope you found it helpful in learning how to make slip knots and chains. Be sure to stick around. I'll be making a lot more videos on how to make some really cool crochet stitches and projects. Um, so be sure to stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.